Well, welcome to the video uh, explaining Thickner design by Cohen Clevenger and uh, we implement this on the the website shown here at the bottom the um, particles org UK website um, before we actually talk about the method of um, solution for the simulation of the continuous thickener we need to start off uh, looking at the equations behind the simulation uh, and some illustrations in order to provide us with the uh, uh, background for the definitions and therefore the equations. So here is a thickener and it's the, the principle is that material is going in, appropriately we'll call that the feed, uh, it goes in normally to the centre of a thickener uh, so that's one input into the device and two outputs. The overflow is coming out here and if we've got the process running and designed correctly the overflow that comes out here should be near enough clear liquid. Okay, um, So that's one of the outputs. Obviously if we're putting a slurry into the thickener we also need to take the solids out and the solids should be coming out in the underflow by no means is that just full of solids there's still an awful lot of liquid associated with the underflow and that will probably need to go on to a filtration stage uh, before doing whatever it is you want with the solids so there's one input the feed and two outputs the overflow which is by definition going to be clear liquid uh, and the underflow which is at a much higher solid concentration compared to what we put in at the feed uh, something else that's worth p pointing out is this this rake. This this device that's uh, illustrated just here is a rake that only exists at the bottom of the device, of the bottom of the thickener, and it revolves very very slowly. It's not designed to mix the solids. It's just designed to pull the solids down into the uh, into the underflow, so as to stop any accumulation on the bottom surface. Second thing to note is that although this is a conical section down here, we tend to ignore the conical section. When it comes to the material balance and the modelling of the process, uh, we'll be regarding it really as a, as a cylinder. So what is it that we want to know? Well, it all hinges around getting the right plan area. Okay, So the plan area is if you imagine yourself look at looking down on the top surface here of the thickener, so if you imagine yourself just here looking down, the plan area is the area that you see. Okay, It's not the cross-sectional area, it's the plan area, the area that this projects on the Earth's surface. Um, supposing we don't design the thickener correctly, well, we have a problem with what's called the sludge blanket. Because here we have the sludge blanket is all below that line that I've just drawn. And if it's working correctly, that sludge blanket stays more or less the same height. Okay. If, however, we feed it with too high a concentration for the plan area, then the sludge blanket will increase in height and carry on increasing in height unless we do something to rectify the problem until eventually the solids start to come out in the overflow. And if that is being discharged, for example, into a, a waterway, into the environment, then that means the whole process could, could be closed down, not just the thickener, but the whole process that uh, the thickener serves for a breach of consent for discharge limit, for example. Uh, so it's critically important to maintain these and to uh, check that the thickener is working according to its design specifications. OK, so that's the run through how the thickener works. It's a low energy device. Uh, basically it's gravity that's doing the, the thickening, the particles are, are settling, they're settling in what's called hindered settling rather than uh, free settling, uh, but it's a low energy device because gravity is free but we still need some energy to pump the fluids around and essentially what we're talking about here is establishing what the plan area is of the thickener. If we get that right then the process works. OK, a little bit more definition then. What's going on inside the sludge blanket of the thickener? It is a porous medium. 
okay so it's a porous medium just like a, a filter cake it'll have lots of solids lots of gaps between the solids and this analysis just here is important to us still uh, we talk about big C uppercase C capital C as the solids fraction by volume so uppercase C is the solids fraction by volume that's volume of solids divided by the total volume of the porous medium uh, the alternative to that is the void fraction or porosity it's exactly the same porosity is, is void fraction and that's the void volume divided by the total volume if you add those two fractions up clearly we should equal unity in our porous medium over here just here we've either got solid particles or we've got voids and there's nothing else that's there okay so don't forget the sludge blanket is a porous medium it is with the particles moving but uh, in a good system we want the particles to get to a highest possible concentration where we can still actually pump the material out in the underflow if it becomes too highly concentrated the pump that's trying to pull the underflow out probably isn't going to work very well so there is a balance to the underflow concentration we don't want it very very high but of course we want it much higher than the feed concentration otherwise we're not doing anything okay so we're designing a thickener which could be many meters many tens of meters or even hundreds of meters in diameter and we're going to do that based on what's called a batch settling test okay typically we use a measuring cylinder in the laboratory it's got to be a reasonable size measuring cylinder maybe 500 milliliters maybe a liter uh, total volume uh, but nevertheless it's still much much smaller than the diameter of the uh, continuous thickener now the, the good news is that settling velocity isn't a function of area okay so we have a, if we have a certain concentration inside our device inside our measuring cylinder if we have a certain concentration the rate at which this interface settles which is being illustrated over here on the right hand side uh, the rate at which this interface settles will be the same regardless of whether it is in a, a measuring cylinder like this or a big 100 meter diameter uh, vessel so for the same concentration of solids the interface settling velocity is the same and what we see in the animation are particles that are in hindered settling the red particles are the biggest particles the um, blue particles are probably the intermediate sized particles and the yellow are the smallest but they the concentration is so high that the particles can't settle freely they're being dragged down uh, so the bigger red particles would like to sell, settle faster but the yellow particles the smaller ones would like to settle slower but they settle on mass because of that hindering nature and that's what we see with the uh, measuring cylinders that are illustrated just here as time goes on this is uh, basically a sort of time different photographs at different time here's the interface here's the interface and it's now fully settled out because that's a quite a clean supernatant above it and that's what we see just here the, the graph is a straight line to start with then it starts to curve after a little while and then eventually it will just settle out completely and stay stay flat so we can actually work out or measure the settling velocity for a given concentration by doing this uh, batch settling test in the laboratory we can measure the settling velocity for a given concentration that's an important point um, okay well here is our settling velocity we'll call it uh, u uh, and that's going to be a function of concentration the higher the concentration the slower u will be the ultimate limit being maximum concentration of solids there's no settling so that's that's logical the fastest settling velocity will be if we're not in hindered settling if we're in free settling so we know our hindered settling velocity will some be somewhere between the Stokes settling velocity if Stokes is valid um, through to zero depending on what the concentration of solids is we know we're in that sort of range of solid settling velocities but we're not going to be talking about velocities uh, solely we're actually going to be talking about a material balance uh, 
a flux balance, which uh, if we make it into a mass balance, we really want units of kilograms per second. Remember we had the feed going into the thickener, the overflow coming out. Well, that's an easy one because that has no kilograms per solid coming out. Uh, but because all the solids come out in the underflow. So uh, that's where we want the same kilograms per second coming out in the underflow as to what goes in kilograms per second in the feed. OK, well, let's just talk about batch flux before we move on to a thickener. Uh, a is the area, and that's the, in this instance, uh, it, it, it is, uh, it, it's still the plan area of the, uh, of, of the, of the vessel and u is the velocity so a times by u is the meters cubed per second of material flowing downwards according to its according to the batch settling if we multiply that by density then that gives us the kilograms per second that we seek for a material balance okay uh, so that's what we mean by batch settling flux typically we don't actually um, multiplied by density. Uh, typically we just have the uh, velocity for, ba for batch settling flux, but that's because density cancels out. It's a, it's a constant. We'll do that in a moment or two uh, in our derivations. Okay, so well, let's move on to a, a thickener. The feed, feed flux, what will that be? F is the feed rate. Okay, so that's this meters cubed per second. That's the feed rate. C0 is the initial solids concentration by volume of the feed material. That's dimensionless because it's a volume per volume ratio. And then, of course, we've got the density here, uh, which is in kilograms per meter cubed. So now we're looking at the rate at which we feed solids into our system. OK, uh, so that is the feed Thickener feed flux. Continuous device, that's the thickener feed flux. As I mentioned before, there, there is no solids flux in the overflow, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but obviously we do have to consider what's coming out in the underflow. And we also have to consider the rate of uh, flux or the flux movement inside the vessel, because that's what we want to get in balance. If we're out of balance, then this sludge blanket will start to build up until eventually it overflows, and that's bad news. Okay, well, what about the underflow, uh, the underflow flux? Uh, we have the equation here for the underflow flux. It's a little bit uh, complicated because uh, we've introduced this velocity called t, and as it says down here, the uh, t is the velocity that's induced inside the thickener, and don't forget we're only really considering what's going on in the cylindrical section. So it's the velocity that we're inducing inside the thickener for any solid concentration. So whatever our solid concentration is, it has two components of settlement. One is the batch flux, like our measuring cylinders in the laboratory, plus we've imposed a, uh, a velocity due to the continual removal of material from the base of the unit. So we've got two components to our solids flux inside the device. Um, and T is the uh, velocity that we're imposing inside this cylindrical part of the thickener uh, due to that underflow withdrawal. So uh, the underflow concentration times by T, the velocity that's induced, times by that plan area, that will give us the meters cubed per solids, multiply again by the density, gives us the kilograms per second that is coming out of the device. So we've got the feed rate in, we've got the underflow rate out based on just the solids. Now let's consider what's happening inside the thing. Now, just a, a quick add-on point that uh, those of you might be thinking, well, hold on a minute, what about the batch settling velocity uh, of the un at the underflow concentration? We can ignore that. That's negligible. Just uh, It's dominated by the fact that it's being pumped out. Most of the solids velocity is, most of the solids flux rather, is coming from the pumping out at the bottom rather than the batch settling. So we'll, we'll ignore the, uh, 
the batch flux inside the vessel at the underflow concentration. Um, what's taking place at a position between the feed and the uh, and the underflow? Uh, this is our flux balance. We'll call it G. Okay, for for flux, uh, we've still got the area. Okay, we've got the velocity due to the underflow withdrawal, and that's having an effect on all the uh, material inside the thickener. It's not just happening at the bottom of the thickener. Uh, okay, it's, it's everywhere inside the thickener is affected by having this continual removal of mass from the uh, from the bottom of the thickener, and then of course we've got the batch settling flux, which is the thing or the batch settling velocity, which is the thing that we can measure in the laboratory. Then we've got the concentration relevant to our local position. So if this is where we're doing the flux balance, that would be the concentration just here. Um, and the solids density, which again is a constant, that would, com that would convert our meters cubed per second into kilograms per second. So that's our flux just here. So that should be equal to the same amount of flux that's coming in from the feed, the same amount of flux that's going out into the underflow, and the same amount of flux at any position inside the thickener, if we're all in balance. Okay. Right. Well, that gives us three equations. We've, we've cancelled the density out. Uh, it should be in kilograms per seconds, but now each one of these is going to be in meters cubed per second because the density is a constant. So the method of solution is explained down here. Okay, we rearrange the underflow equation um, for T. So the underflow equation is this one just here. Okay, so you're rearranging this equation for T, putting that into this equation down here, and wherever we have a G, because we'll have a G there, and we'll actually have a G here, which we've rearranged to put in. Wherever we have a G, we put in this instead, because the flux in the feed has got to be equal to the flux inside the thickener and the flux in the underflow. Uh, why do we why do we not want G? Because we don't know what G is. If we do this rearrangement and substitution, we now have terms that we know every value and that gives us the cohen clevenger equation where a is the plan area of the thickener that's the area looking down on the thickener f is the feed rate meters cubed per second c naught is the feed concentration as a volume per volume ratio so this is now meters so these two together are meters cubed per second of solids okay uh, how does that dimensionally give us the plan area? Because we know that this should all be the, the plan area. It gives us the dimensionally the area because this down here is actually just velocity. Okay, what we mean by u as a function of c is that we're really dividing by the settling velocity, the batch settling velocity, which we know to be a function of concentration. We're not actually multiplying it by concentration. Uh, don't get confused by the equation. It's a value of u, but we can't just use a single value of u. We need to use lots of values of, of u where it's the settling velocity somewhere between the feed concentration and the underflow concentration. So in other words, we actually calculate this equation many times over for c just here to be equal to C naught, C naught plus a little bit more, C naught plus a little bit more, C naught plus a little bit more, until eventually we get to Cu. I mean, when you've got to Cu, obviously these two can these two cancel out. So we're actually calculating the plan area for lots of different concentrations between C naught and Cu, and we're using the appropriate value of the settling velocity for that value of C, just here. That's the way that this equation works. Uh, that's just simply stated here in, in text. Um, if we're going to design a thickener, a thickener correctly, then actually we're going to go with the greatest diameter, the largest diameter, the largest area, because we need it to be able to cope with the 
uh, flux that's coming in. If we don't get the area right, if the area is too small, then we know we'll have this problem where the sludge blanket will build up because we're putting too much solids into the process until it reaches into the overflow. OK, well, if we're talking about design then, what about the depth of the thickener? Well, the depth of the thickener is basically pretty much in that range. There is, there is no incompressible way to uh, determine the depth of a thickener. Um, you, just, you do obviously need storage area for the, your material. There will be variation in feed rates, so you've got to take into account the fact that there'll be some variation inside the process. So by and large, thickness tend to be two to four meters in height, total height. The sludge blanket might be about a half of whatever the total height is. Uh, if we have a highly compressible material, then you might design a thickener to be much, much higher than that, uh, but that's a different um, that's a different design process altogether to, to incompressible um, sedimentation. Okay, so we know what the height is. There's some somewhere between two and four meters. The only unknown we have is what the plan area should be, and that's what we intend to use from Clevin Clevenger to find out. Hmm. Well, if you're designing a, a process, you may well know what your feed concentration is. OK, so uh, F. So the area is plan area is what we're after. The feed concentration uh, is a design parameter. It, there's a there's a process that this is at the back end of. We have a certain feed concentration uh, coming in and we have a certain feed flow rate coming in. So if you like, those two are given to us by whatever uh, is upstream of the process. The underflow concentration, this thing down here, the underflow concentration, that also is likely to be um, a design parameter. We, we know we can't have it too concentrated, but we want it as concentrated as possible, but it can still flow easily onto the next part of the process, which may well be a, a filtration uh, process. Um, but what about what we have here? What about this velocity as a function of concentration or the concentrations that we're going to analyse? We know inherently nothing about the settling velocities unless we do some laboratory tests and measure those uh, settling velocities. Can we turn to uh, the sort of good old textbook uh, to give us the, those settling velocities? Well, we can do, and there are various options here. I'm just going to talk about using the Cassini uh, hydraulic permeability. So the Cassini hydraulic permeability is the technique that we're going to use um, in this simulation. OK, well, what is the Cassini uh, hydraulic permeability? It comes from a force balance. OK, so here is our equation for U. Don't forget this is u as a function of concentration, so there's no multiplication taking place, it's just the velocity, the settling velocity of the solids, uh, is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, the density difference between the solids and the suspending liquid, uh, 1 minus the solids concentration, so in other words that's the voidage or porosity cubed, and that's all divided by the liquid viscosity, the coefficient of dynamic viscosity, uh, then there's this thing called K, which is the Cassini constant, the solids concentration, and then the specific surface area per unit volume of the particles, SV. So why is SV in here? Well, it's kind of logical that the higher the surface area, then the slower that the particle particles will settle. Why? Because they've got bigger drag. So you've got finer particles, they've got much, much bigger drag. They'll settle much, much slower. And in fact, you can see it's to the power two. So the particle uh, size, which gives us the specific surface area per unit volume, because SV is dependent on the particle size, has a major effect on the on the settling rate. So the only thing to talk a little bit more about is the Cassini constant. And of course, the textbook value of Cassini constant is five, but um, that's not necessarily a good value. It's the only one we can use in the absence of any data. 
ideally uh, you look into you do some laboratory tests and fit the Cassini constant uh, using this equation to the settling velocities that are measured. So if you could actually measure the settling velocities in the laboratory, you can then come to this equation and come up with your own value of, of k that makes the fit uh, work. Okay, so we're using the, these two equations then, the settling velocity and uh, the Cassini constant um, inside for the settling velocity uh, and then the Cassini, sorry, the Cohen-Clevenger technique for the area. And we need to calculate the settling velocity at these different uh, concentrations, for all these different concentrations that we intend to uh, put into our equation, our cassini kalman equation. And here is an example of the um, output from the um, sedimentation, the, the thickening sedimentation. Uh, the, the feed rate was uh, one meters cubed per, uh, per second, feed concentration of 2% or 0 0.02 by volume fraction, underflow concentration was 12%, solids density is 2,500 kilograms per meter cubed, a fairly standard solids density, liquid density is the same as water, uh, the sotamine diameter of the particles, which gives us the specific surface area per unit volume is 50 microns, uh, the underflow rate and the overflow rate are calculated, and as a volume balance, they must equal what's being put in as a volume. So the underflow rate is 600 meters cubed per hour. The overflow rate is 3000 meters cubed per hour. Uh, and these are calculated from the inputs that, are just, that I've just been through. And then you can see here we have a whole variety of different thickener areas. And a whole variety of thickener diameters, because it's assumed that these are circular thickeners. Um, and it varies from anything from 22.5, that seems to be the greatest uh, greatest diameter, 21.7, 20.8. Yeah, so in other words, the largest area, in other words, the slowest flux um, inside the continuous thickener is given by the lowest concentration, the 2% concentration. So using our Cassini, uh, sorry, using our Cohen-Clevenger equation, uh, with the an input of um, c equal to c naught, actually gives us the largest diameter for the thickener. That's not always the case. It, generally speaking, it is a a low concentration, but it's all, not always necessarily the lowest concentration that gives us the um, the largest uh, thickening thickener diameter. Okay, so uh, that's the a quick run through of how to use the Cohen-Clevenger approach and the actual um, technique that's used in the simulation at this website. Thank you.